This is The Change Physician, episode 169. Hey folks, welcome back to The Change Physician. This is your host, Dr. Kevin Kukaro, with my fantastic co-host, Dr. Melissa Katie Ara, and our returning guest, Dr. Sonali Ruder. Dr. Ruder, if you guys didn't catch the first episode, you should go back and, and hear her, her uh, physician journey and why she went to medical school and the influence of her parents on that, and ultimately how that influenced her to create the the blog, The Foodie Physician, which also has a brand new cookbook out, The Foodie Physician Cookbook that is out now. Um, a lot of resources there, a lot of healthy recipes, and we're going to explore a little bit more about that now. So Sonali, thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we kind of hit in, in the first episode, <laughs> This I, I'm still just like blown away by this, that you started cooking in residency, which is like the yep. time when nobody starts cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and then randomly decided to um, enter a, a contest that you won for recipe, had to go fly out all the mm -hmm. way to LA, did a TV show there, and then ultimately became interested in attending culinary school. So yeah. let's explore that a little bit more. So you're finishing residency, mm -hmm. you decided to enter into culinary school. And what was that thought process there? Well, why, why did you, because I mean, you can cook, but why did you really, really want to go into and actually get formal training in it? I don't, you know, that's a good question. Maybe I'm, maybe it's just my background of always like, um, growing up education is so important, you know, like <laughs> I think that drilled into my head and becoming a doctor and going through all the years of training. Maybe I kind of felt like I kind of needed that, but, um, but yeah, you know, like what I was saying earlier is, is I kind of realized that everything I knew about cooking was just from watching like chefs on the food network, basically, <laughs> Oh, you know, or my parents, you know, in the kitchen. Um, so I wanted to, um, yeah, I wanted to learn like the basic, um, fundamentals and, um, I don't know. I, I, is it weird to say I, I, I like school? Like I'm that kind of person, you know, I mean, that kind of like classes and like, so like I, I was, you know, I, I, I loved culinary school, you know, I, it was fun. I was doing like extra credit and stuff, you know, I mean, culinary school was so fun. And then you get to take home all your leftovers at the end of the night. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I, I really, I wanted to learn, like, you know, I wanted to get like more, a broader knowledge base and I wanted to learn how to cook more, you know, cause I grew up um, eating a certain food, uh, but I wanted to like kind of learn more techniques and be able to cook everything. Mm -hmm. Was there anything specific in culinary school, like mm -hmm. that you weren't even aware of, like, mm -hmm. uh, like something that you specifically weren't aware of that you're like, whoa, that's really important. And I, I wouldn't even have known to ask a question. Um, yeah. So, so much stuff was like that, honestly. Um, and a lot, <clears throat> a lot of what I was surprised about was actually how much like, uh, butter and fat is used <laughs> to be honest in restaurant food. I mean, that's why restaurant food tastes taste so good. You know, they, there's something called Montero burr. So it, it's a French technique for making sauces where you mount a sauce with butter. That just means you just put in like chunks and chunks and chunks of cold butter and you swirl it into a sauce at the end. And that's what makes it so rich and creamy. <laughs> that, you know, that's what makes it taste so good also, or even things like, um, making like we, you do a pastry module in culinary school. So we learned how to make puff pastry, you know, puff pastry is something you, most people will buy frozen in the store, but we actually sat there and made puff pastry and made croissants and you just basically start with like a pound of butter and and you make the dough and you just keep folding more and more butter into it and rolling it out and folding more butter and rolling out and that's what makes it rise is all the the cold butter and when the heat of the oven hits the butter and the and the dough it, that that's what makes it rise so um that was probably one of the things that surprised me the most <laughs> but um but yeah i mean I, honestly everything i mean the, like the most basic thing they teach you in culinary school first of all like we talked about is just sanitation in the beginning but then knife knife skills how mm -hmm. important knife skills are so at the beginning of every single class in culinary school you do knife skills for the first like 15 to 20 minutes so we would just be chopping potatoes in a perfect medium dice and the instructor would come around and look to examine our potatoes to make sure you know they were perfect <laughs> And he, of course, would give me a hard time because he knew I was a doctor. So he'd always be like, oh, doctor, where are your knife skills? You know, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's uh, I mean, it, it's it's a totally different world. You know, it's um, culinary school and medical school. But to me, it was it was so much fun because I loved what I was what I was doing. Yeah, it, when you said knife skills at first, I thought you meant like safety, like, oh, like yeah, how to cut without hurting yourself. <laughs> but then I realized, oh, I, yep. I get it. <laughs> 
safe, safety too, you know, and they, they teach you how to like, you know, hold your food. You know, when you hold your food, you don't stick your fingers out. You kind of curl your, your fingers. So your knuckles are there. So if you do by mistake, you know, slice against your knife, you don't cut your fingers, but, um, and then also keeping your knife sharp because you are far more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than with the sharp knife, you know, cause if you're trying to saw through something with a dull knife, the knife is going to slip and cut yourself. So we see that by the way, all the time in the ER, people <laughs> trying to cut through a bagel, you know, when they're holding it in their palm or, or, or pack into like an avocado to remove the pit and they, they cut right into their hand. Um, but yeah, in terms of knife skills, it's actually, there's like a million different um, types of cuts, small dice, medium dice, large dice, brunoise, you know, like all, all these different cuts that, that um, you know, it's, it's basically just to make the food look, look pretty, but you spend a lot of time doing that in culinary school. <laughs> So you, you can actually counsel your patients who cut off their fingers. Uh, yes. say, <laughs> safety. You, you've learned yes. this. Um, I'm okay. curious some of the things, because he, he kind of took one of the questions I was thinking of just like, yeah. what are things that people wouldn't think about like that you learned? But I was wondering, I, mm -hmm. I kind of heard from someone that kind of got into the foodie stuff that, yeah. that there was, um, there's a lot more math that goes on. Like when you think about like, like baking soda and this and like and yeah. the, the mm -hmm. amounts in order to make it work right. Did you find, yeah. did you have to learn a lot yeah. of that? Um, yeah, not learn a lot of it, but it's very, like baking is very different, I think, than, than um, savory cooking. That's why most chefs are either like one or the other, you know, it's wow. very rare that you find someone that does more because the savory chefs are the ones that are just throwing in a little of this and a little of that, you know, until it tastes and keep tasting and tasting and tasting until oh. it's perfect. Whereas baking is like the total opposite baking. If, you know, if you want that cake to rise and to have a delicate texture, it has to have like a perfect, perfect measurement and perfect proportions. Mm -hmm. um, so like, you know, one of the things, for example, you learn when you're doing your pastry module is, um, you know, what's more accurate when you're measuring like flour for a recipe, mm -hmm. is it more accurate to say, you know, use one cup of flour or to say use 4.4 ounces of flour, you know, so you go through this whole thing where you learn the difference between, you know, volume versus weight. If you, if you scoop out a cup of flour for a recipe three different times, you, I guarantee you'll get three different actual amounts of flour each time, because it depends on how much you're compacting the flour, how, how much you're leveling it off, you know, and that's going to affect the final texture of your recipe. Whereas if, if a recipe says use four ounces of flour and you measure it out and you put it on your little food scale and you weigh it out, then you're going to get the you know exact right amount every time. So, so with the baking, especially, I, I think it is, there is a lot of like actually math and, and science to it in terms of, you know, how, how things rise and how to get like a, a flaky crust so that it's not heavy, you know, <laughs> things yeah. like that. That um, explains my failures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little things like you know when a recipe says make sure you use like cold butter instead of like you know warm yeah. butter. like you think uh oh, what's the difference it's not gonna make a difference but it actually does, does yeah. make a difference in terms of the final texture yeah yeah i just learned that with scones i made some scones <laughs> and they weren't yep. cold but yeah. anyway sorry kevin took us yeah, it, it just makes me laugh because because i'm <laughs> i guess i'm much more of a savory person and i just throw yeah. things in and janet is very yeah. much the baker Right, right, my, right, my wife and she's oh, right and she's like yeah. doing this and i'm like why are you even bothering and right. she's weighing everything yes, and i'm like totally. oh geez totally oh geez so i never had a food scale until i went to culinary school now i use it all all the time <laughs> yeah, like, it is amazing like she bought yeah. all that stuff too and i find myself yes, using yeah. it like okay wait we got to do this and <laughs> like there's a pizza i make a detroit style pizza and, and i will mm -hmm. weigh the ingredients yep. for that yeah yeah. Oh, these, these cooks, man, they're just crazy, <laughs> crazy people. So, so you, you go to culinary school. When did you start the foodie physician then? Was that before or after? It was, um, it was actually while I was in culinary school. Okay. So, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I'm not a computer person at all, you know? So, but I was like, um, you know, all my friends, family, they thought it was really cool that I was doing this. I kind of surprised everybody by doing this. <laughs> it was a little bit out of the blue, you know? So, so I did it just, um, to kind of share my experience and, you know, and like, like I said, we were doing really cool stuff, like making, you know, homemade puff pastry or like making homemade sausage, like things I would never, you know, uh, think to do at home. So I wanted to kind of share my experiences. So that's, that's when I started it when I was, when I was a student. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> I was just scrolling through the visuals and the recipes are all, all great. I, I know you said on the site. We're in the process of redoing the site. Oh, are you? <laughs> who, do you who do you use to help with the site? 
from a business standpoint? Um, so I am very excited that you asked me that because I get to tell you that my secret is that my husband, Pete, is the other half of the foodie physician. <laughs> Oh, very nice. <laughs> this is <what> I use, yeah. <laughs> but he's he's fellow he's a fellow ER doctor. You know, we met in residency, and um, we we've always kind of done everything together. So we started the blog together, and he he does not cook though. Everybody always asks that. That's the one thing he doesn't do is he he doesn't cook, but he's an excellent um, taste tester and and eater. <laughs> And he, um, he started getting into photography when, mm. you know, when we were doing this. And, um, so basically all those amazing photographs on the blog are all Pete and he's just over the years, just gotten like, you know, really good with his photography. So, so I do all the cooking and then I, I make the dishes look all pretty. I like the food styling aspect of it. And then he comes in and he takes all the photos. Um, and then he actually also takes over with the social media. Cause that, that's kind of not my thing either. Um, mm. I feel like, I don't know, I was right at the age where like, we didn't really grow up with that stuff. So to me, it's not, it's not second nature. You know, I'm not one of those people that, that will automatically go on Instagram and Facebook and be like, Hey, this is what I'm doing this minute. Or this, you know, this is what I'm eating today. Um, but you kind of have to be like that today if you want your blog to be successful. So Pete does a lot of our, our social media, but, um, but it's just the two of us, honestly. Um, you know, we just hired a company just to kind of help us redesign the website a little bit, but right now we don't have anybody else um, helping us. So, um, so it is a bit overwhelming at times, you know, it means most nights or days when I'm not working in the ER, I'm, I'm up till like two o'clock in the morning on my laptop, you know, working on the blog, <laughs> Yeah. but, um, you know, but Fortunately, I, I love it. So, so I like doing yeah. it. I just have to echo yeah. Melissa here. The, the pictures are amazing. Oh, <laughs> it's awesome. amazing. I like to give Pete credit because Pete doesn't like to take, take credit for anything. So I mean, these are like professional. Like, I, I don't yeah, think you can yeah. go to a, any of the, the, the top, whatever cooking websites and find it, this is really, really well done. I mean, they're just gorgeous. Uh, thanks, guys. It, it's funny if you take a look at um, our pictures from like 10 years ago versus now, I mean, it's, it's such a difference, you know, we just like learned a lot, like over the years, but we have a, we have a whole little setup. We've got all these like wooden boards and props that we use for styling and lighting and stuff like that, but it's all, it's all self-taught. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm curious from, um, from a, financial standpoint as far as supporting the website and yeah. um as far as you know mm -hmm. getting revenue through what you do as a foodie physician yeah. i mean sometimes people do things on the side and they're just uh, minimal yeah. revenue right. it looks like you have right. some ads in there like how how is yeah. it make money through foodie physician oh so, yeah no that's a great question too because that that's that's been evolving over the years too so in the beginning um it was just a pastime and a hobby and then after doing it for several years we realized um, we are putting so much time <laughs> and effort and money all expense, you know, into buying all these ingredients and, you know, photographing that we need to be making some sort of income from it, from it. So it started off very simply just putting up some ads on the site and things like that. And then, um, over the years, yeah, basically we, we generate revenue a few ways. So the, the main way is, is through the ads. So we, we join like an ad company that works with a lot of food bloggers. So, um, so we make some revenue just from people going to the site, you know, page views. Um, and then the other thing is I work with a lot of, um, companies, um, as an ambassador or a spokesperson. So like, for example, for 2022, I'm going to be an ambassador for the national blueberry council. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so basically for 2022, I'm going to be taught and, you know, I, I basically only work with companies that I believe in, you know, uh, like, uh, and products that I, that I like and believe in. And I love blueberries because they're so good for you. So, um, I'm going to be doing a bunch of like blog posts for them and, and, you know, little IG live on Instagram and things like that. Um, and, you know, a lot of companies nowadays, they, they advertise through influencers like me, you know, rather than traditional media. So, um, so I'll work with companies like, you know, like Whole Foods or, or, you know, Faye Greek yogurt and things like that. And, and they'll like pay influencers like me to, to put up, post, like develop recipes with their products basically, and post about them on social media and on the blog. So that's a lot of the income is through, um, paid jobs like that, you know, and ambassadorships and things like that. Um, and then there's the cookbooks, which, which, you know, are more of something I've always wanted to do. They don't generate a ton of income, but it's, it's always been like personal goal of mine, you know, to, to write cookbooks. 
And then the last thing is sometimes I do like speaking um, engagements, just um, I've actually gone to a couple of like med schools. Like I went to university of Miami medical school to speak to their medical students and, and do um, cooking demos with them and, and stuff like that. So, so it's a few different, few different ways, but it's um, uh, my latest thing is, as I mentioned to you, I'm not a computer person, but my latest thing is basically I'm, I'm uh, focusing more on like SEO, like search engine optimization and how to bring more traffic to the website and things like that. So that's, that's my next endeavor. Very cool. And so the speaking engagements, do you reach out to them or are they coming to you and do they pay you? How does that work? Uh, yeah. So now they reach out to me. So like in the beginning um, with, with food blogging and stuff like that, like there's a lot of um, companies you can join where they kind of connect people like me with, with companies and things like that. Um, but then after a while, like once you kind of get to do it a lot, I, I, they, they just usually find us, you know, just by searching, <laughs> searching right. like healthy food blogs or doctor yeah. and chef and things like that. So yeah, so usually just contact, you know, on my website, I have like a contact me thing with my email address. So, so usually people contact me, um, like a couple of years ago, I was, um, I went to the Cayman islands for the grand Cayman. They have like a national healthcare conference every year. So they asked me to be their, um, their keynote speaker. So, <laughs> so cool. they like, yeah, so they, you know, gave me a stipend and, and then we got to stay. I took my family. We stayed in a nice hotel, you know, and for a few days and, and I gave a lecture and did a um, couple of panel discussions and things like that. Um, but so that's, that's always fun too. I get nervous about those things, but, but I, I, I love doing it. I'm kind of like a naturally shy person. So I have to make myself do this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but once I'm there and I'm doing it, it's, you know, I, I, I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. You're passionate about what you talk yeah. about and it makes you get over the anxiety a little bit right. exactly <laughs> I'm always very nervous right right before and then I'm like okay once <laughs> once I start yeah yeah cool. so, so this started sort of as a passion project for you yeah. with the food position what was mm-hmm. and again what was the thought process because with you and your husband being both so busy as it is yeah and we didn't even get into the fact that you have young children right which is um in their eight do you say eight and two and a half? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I remember those ages, both of them really yep. well. Yeah. Those are neither one of them easy ages. <laughs> right. So what was, I mean, at some point you, you come with a blog and you're like, Hey, this is either we're going to keep spending money and in, in, uh, or we're not going to spend money and we're just going right. to do it as a passion thing, or right. we're going to transition to this. And so what yeah. was the thought process around, why did you decide to kind of, kind of keep investing into the foodie physician kind of develop from there? Yeah. That's funny. Is that, that's funny you ask that. It's almost like you know know my history. But I will be completely honest with you that there have been um, periods where we just were like fed up with the foodie physician and we just stopped doing it honestly for a couple of years because this is um, a little more than ten years now that we've mm-hmm. we've had the blog, you know. And um, uh, like I've seen people that started years ago around the same time as me that have like like much much bigger blogs because that became their full they be, they made that their full time job. But Pete and I could never like really a hundred percent commit to that. Cause we're, we're both doctors, you know, obviously. And it's like, <laughs> um, so in a lot, you know, so it's, so it's been hard because it's always like, I, I sometimes feel like I can't like, you know, give a hundred percent. Cause I've obviously have other, other commitments. So there, there've been periods where we both were like, okay, we're fed up with this. We're just going to stop. And, you know, one of those times was when I had Luca, my son, you know, for, for, the, for those two years, we actually didn't really do much at all with the blog. Cause mm-hmm you know, I was focusing on maybe, on my baby. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but more recently, actually just, just this past year, you know, he's two and a half now. So he's, he's older, he's a little bit more independent. Um, we were like, we're, we're decided we're going to go all in again and we're going to, we're going to try this again. Um, because I would love to ultimately, you know, if, um, make enough of an income from the blog that I can cut back in the ER a little bit more. Cause I, I feel like I'm the happiest at work when, when I'm working a, a certain, a certain number of shifts, <laughs> just enough so that I'm, you know, I get to keep up my skills. Um, but I'm not getting burnt out, you know, cause with ER, especially it's like, um, you know, there's such a high burnout rate and I'm much happier at work when I'm not working like a million shifts mm-hmm. a month. So, um, so that's ultimate goal to, to kind of have both so that I can, you know, work the number of shifts I want to at work and then have this income on the side, uh, for the blog. And I think that's, that's an interesting point. Cause there's all this stuff about physician side gigs and, and, yeah. and there's this happy, everybody, everybody's looking for something. Right. And oftentimes yeah. I think some people are not even looking for, they're just looking to get out completely, Yeah. Mm-hmm. but there's a sort of golden handcuff thing when it comes to medicine, because, um, I guess I, I'm going to, I don't want to say it. I'm just going to bring it out is that yeah. 
the difference between the blog makes versus what you can make as a physician, I'm assuming are quite different. Like right. somebody who wasn't yeah. a physician would say, this is more than enough for me. Right, right. But has that been sort of the, the problem with that is just the income disparities between the two? Yeah. Yes. And then also the fact that it's, it's not um, steady or guaranteed mm-hmm. at all. And that's yeah. just not my personality <laughs> to, to, you know, to risk it like that, because with, with the blog um, it's always, we're always trying to get more jobs and trying to work with more people. And, but it's not, um, you know, it's definitely not a steady income. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Um, it's known in the food blogging world that quarter four is like the biggest quarter. So because at the end of the year, Thanksgiving, Christmas, those are all like the big food holidays. So that's when, you know, you, you generate a lot of your income just in those couple of months, because all these companies are trying to find bloggers to, you know, spread the word about their products and things like that. But then come January, all of a sudden it's, it's, you know, not that much anymore. So it's a little too unstable for me. And, you know, we're, we're doctors, we're used to having like stability and <laughs> regularity. I don't think, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I can make that leap yet, you know, and to, to do it full time, but, but yeah, that's, it's exactly that, you know, it's the, it's a little bit too much of a disparity. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, in the medical world, you have more work than you really need. <laughs> There's always plenty. Um, there, there really isn't a lull uh, for the most part, uh, maybe an anesthesia in January or, you know, but still, yeah. I think it's always super busy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I love this. I love all of the, um, it, it, there's an entrepreneurial spirit and also that creative side to you. Yeah. That, um, <laughs> I, I I can speak for myself and I know other people we've interviewed that it kind of speaks to your soul. Um, yeah. Like you put a lot more sweat uh, and tears <laughs> and yeah. into it than sometimes monetarily you get back. Um, but striking that balance, it seems like to be the, the hardest thing. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with my kids, you know, I, I, I feel bad at times when I'm home, like when I'm home, they want to play. And, and a lot of times I'm at home just doing work on my laptop, you know, and it, it's, it's hard to find that balance, which is why, like I mentioned before, a lot of times I'll be up till two or three in the morning, uh, doing this stuff af- after they go to sleep. And that's how, um, I actually have uh, a couple of other cookbooks, uh, what that I wrote. Yeah. A few years ago, one's a pregnancy cookbook and one's a baby food cookbook. So I wrote those, yeah, when I was pregnant (laughs) with my daughter and then the baby food one after she was born because I was trying to figure out how to make homemade baby food and things like that. So that, um, those same things, I wrote those cookbooks like basically late, late nights. (laughs) But I've always been like that. Even in med school, I was like the student that was pulling like all-nighters and stuff. That's that's my personality. I've always been like that. (laughs) Yeah. So what's your favorite kind of food for yourself, like to cook? Uh, I honestly, I love like classic comfort food, like Italian food. My husband's Italian. So I just, I love like homemade pasta. And <laughs> I love carbs. I would never be able to do a diet where you give up carbs as I'm not a fan of like keto and all these other things. <laughs> I couldn't do it in the long run, you know, but I just love like homemade bread, pasta, um, things like that. And I love like spice too. Like I cook a lot of, um, stuff with spices. That, that's one of my healthy eating tips that I always give people is like, um, just put a lot of um, spice or flavor in your food because it's a good way, you know, herbs and spices are a good way to season your food without adding extra calories and, you know, and fat. Uh, but I'm Indian, so I grew up eating a lot of spice. So I love Indian food. I love um, like Mexican, like Tex-Mex stuff. I I love everything, honestly. I just, I love food. <laughs> food. <laughs> a foodie physician, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. So do you grow any of your herbs or spices? No, but I really want to. So in, okay. we did, yeah, in New York, we used to have, you know, I lived in an apartment in New York City. So we had like a little herb garden. And then same thing when we moved to Florida, we were in a condo for the first five years. So I had one of those indoor gardens with mm-hmm. the herbs growing. But now we actually just bought a house. Um, well, it was two years. It's right around the time COVID started when we bought a house. So I have a backyard for the first time in my life. So I actually want to get a garden. Very nice. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to. And in Florida, a lot of things, you know, grow well here. So I want to have a vegetable garden and then herbs too. Awesome. Well, Kevin loves, uh, you like making your own bread, right? Yeah. Stop because I was eating my own bread. <laughs> like, I know. Yeah. Because that's what, you know, the, just like everybody else, when COVID started, what do you do? You yep. start baking. Exactly. And then uh, Janet, for some reason, thought that I wanted to do sourdough. And so she got the starter. And I'm like, well, yep. now it's like a pet. Yeah. But um, yeah, we were making so the much bread. bread. I'm like, maker? we got to stop you- this, huh? Yeah. I said, do you have an actual bread maker? No, 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 no. We just you make it like real, like, in yeah, the I, I talked about that like 20 years ago with her. And she's like, ah, you don't need that. We can just <laughs> make bread. Like, and then there, there's that, uh, the no need 
New York Times one that come out? The, okay. I that's know. like, it's you just stick it in the bowl and leave it overnight or whatever. Okay. Yeah. It's super easy. Like bread yeah. is like the easiest thing in the world to make now. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I was eating it and mm-hmm. yeah, I don't want to <laughs> eat called, it. It's called the <laughs> pondemic, Kevin. Pond, yeah. Spanish wow. for bread. Yeah, for the bread demic. Put it on the pound, pound demic. <laughs> we were going through like a loaf a week at least. Yep. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, everybody loved it. And then we stopped. And then Janet started with it. And then I'm like, yep. you got to stop making this stuff. Man. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> This is bad news. But um, did you get on the banana bread trend? That was like the most searched. Like the ban- you know, that's the one we didn't. I love banana bread. Yeah, yeah we we, <laughs> we weren't no getting nuts. into that with no nuts. That's that's sacrilege. Oh, I don't like it with nuts. What was that? I said chocolate chips are good. <laughs> well, that probably could be good too. <laughs> How about nuts. a blueberry? Blueberries in the banana bread. That sounds awesome. Ooh, you might have blueberry. just given me my next idea for the blueberry people. <laughs> if you do, I need to have I need to get the link. Yeah, blueberry nice. banana bread. That actually does yeah. sound quite good. Mm-hmm. Sweet on sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So Sonali, what's next with the foodie physician then? Where do you where where would you like to be in a year from now? So, okay, so this current project is I am redoing the website. Um, because I'm trying to make it more SEO friendly <laughs> as, as I'm learning about SEO and search engine optimization and all these lovely things that I, that I never knew anything about in the past. Um, I am doing my, I'm going to start my culinary medicine degree. So I'm going to learn the, how I can reach more people. And, um, ultimately I think a year from now, I would love to be doing, um, online cooking classes. Mm. And, like cooking classes specific for certain diets or certain needs would be, would be great. Um, because like I mentioned, I don't have an office somewhere where people can come and I can sit down with you and, you know, do a consultation and show you how to cook things. So, um, so I would love to do it online. And I think with COVID now, you know, everybody's gotten used to doing everything on online (laughs) zoom. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's, that's what I would love to be doing in a year or so. Awesome. Mm -hmm. You just gave me some ideas. Okay. Yeah. I'll save it for later after or off there. <laughs> <I'm> curious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other uh, questions, uh, Kevin? I, I think that'll do it. Other than uh, okay. Sonali, why don't you just tell us where everybody can reach you or find you or contact you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so my blog is a foodie physician. So it's www.thefoodiephysician.com. Um, in terms of my new cookbook, there's, uh, if you go to my website, there's plenty of links on the site for, to check out my cookbook. And, um, I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at my handles, usually at, at the foodie physician. So all of us. Perfect. Awesome. We'll make sure to put those in the show notes, not just in this episode, but they will be found in the other one. If people want to go and hop and see that other side of your yeah. story as a uh, physician. And for those of you listening, if you don't know what the change physician is all about, you can go to the change physician.com and join us there, whether you're a physician or a physician ally, we'd love to see you. Of course, you can get one of the podcasts at any of the major venues and you can see the video version on YouTube and follow us on Instagram, uh, for releases of episodes. Of course, you can find us also on LinkedIn, um, Facebook page, of course. Oh, and we forgot to mention we are also on saturday or sundays doing our saturday or sunday salutations to kind of give you um, a a little bit of what happened the past week and what's coming up in the next week so thank you for joining us today and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode take care stay well folks